This is the Stacky Pi, a Raspberry Pi Zero form factor RP2040 based board. This is from SB Components, a UK based company. This is the first board of theirs that I've checked out, so I'm interested to see how this goes. So, welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems microcontroller board review. If you want to stay up to date with reviews of new microcontrollers and boards, then make sure that you are subscribed. So, let's begin with the price of this board. As far as I can tell, this board is only available from SB Components directly, and they are selling this for £14, which is a touch over 18 US dollars. For me, shipping within the UK comes out to about £4, bringing the total cost of this board to £18. I backed their Kickstarter campaign a couple of months ago and got a discount on mine, bringing the price down to £7. But unfortunately, this price is no longer available. Uh, also, as a side note, mine arrived in this Amazon-esque unboxing experience, which I do think is a bit wasteful to have this much packaging for something so small. As previously mentioned, we have a Raspberry Pi Zero sized board here. That means that this board has a width of 65mm and a height of 30mm, with the same locations of the four mounting holes. The 40 pin GPIO header is in the expected place, however if I overlay an image of a Raspberry Pi Zero just above the board, I wonder if you can notice a problem. The single micro USB connector of the Stacky Pi does not match the location of one of either of the ones on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now there's not a problem with there only being one USB connector, but at least put it in the same place as one of the other ones on the Pi Zero. There is nothing stopping it on this board being budged a little bit left or a little bit right, and this means that you can't use any Raspberry Pi Zero case, so the official ones uh, have very small holes to put. USB cables through, and that won't work with this board. And so, unless you modify the cases, this is quite a big oversight, I think. I would have thought that if you're going to use the same form factor as the Zero, which has all these accessories already available, then it would make sense to put everything in the right place. Uh, this could be solved by literally moving the USB connector over a couple of millimeters. In terms of the features of this board, this is a relatively simple board and is designed to be a baseboard for accessories that you connect through the 40 header pins. So let's start with the RP2040 chip. This is a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor running stock at 133 MHz, although it can be easily overclocked. It has 264 kilobytes of SRAM, two I2C, SPI and UART controllers, and it also has four analog to digital converter inputs, which are muxed into a single analog to digital converter. It has eight PIO state machines, USB 1.1 host and device support, as well as 16 PWM channels. Supporting the RP2040 chip is eight megabytes of flash storage. If you've previously looked into this board, then you might be surprised as it has been advertised that this board uh, has 64 megabytes of flash storage. I suspect this is a typo and they meant 64 megabits, but this typo is all over their marketing, specs page, Kickstarter, store page and so on, basically everywhere except from the schematic where apparently this board has a 16 megabyte flash chip. I understand making a typo mistake, I know I've personally made so many of those, um, but it does seem a little bit like they've tried to make the onboard flash look a little bit higher in capacity than it is. Um, just say you're using 8 megabytes of flash and avoid all confusion. Uh, people are going to get confused between megabits and megabytes and 8 megabytes is a fine amount of flash storage, so why not say it? Moving on, we have two buttons, a boot select button and a reset button. There are two LEDs, a red power LED and a blue user LED, which is labeled status, and that's connected to GPIO pin 25, so the same GPIO pin on the RP2040 that the Pico uses. There is also a micro SD card slot in the same place as on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And that about sums up all the features of the Stacky Pi. In terms of the pinout, it is quite straightforward. There are two sets of header pins. One is the standard Raspberry Pi 40 pin header with the same pinout, which is a great choice for expansion as there are so many boards that use this connector. So many expansion boards that are called hats, there is also a 6 pin connector on the right hand side of the board, which contains the SWD pins as well as various other power pins. As this board is designed specifically for expansion, we should cover some of the options there. 
So SB components make a handful of hats which are designed for the Pi Zero, which, it, which are compatible with the Stacky Pi. There is a four-way relay board for £17, a servo driver for £12, a power monitoring hat for £19, a motor driver hat and a CAN bus both for £16. They're different boards, just both coming in at £16. And these are only hats that are designed for the Pi Zero by SB Components. They also designed some which are designed for bigger Pis that will still work with this 40-pin connector. Um, but you can also use any other company's version of a Raspberry Pi hat. You could probably find a good deal by shopping around. So in terms of conclusions, this board is very straightforward and using a very good form factor of the Raspberry Pi Zero, I think it's a great starting point. However, the poor location of the micro USB connector is quite frustrating, as why would you share literally 90% of the same form factor but not allow you to put it in a Pi Zero case? I also question the value of this board. Coming in at £14 without shipping, it isn't cheap. In fact, it is more expensive than the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, if you can get your hands on one of those. They go for around £13.50. And this is a quad-core Wi-Fi Bluetooth enabled Linux board. Quite a lot, quite a much more powerful board with many more components. Obviously the scale of those, they are building many more than SB components will be building of this board. But still, it's quite a it's quite a gap. Putting together a very rough bill of materials, obviously I don't have the order numbers of these components and the, the scale that SB components are using, so this is just an estimate. I'm going to use price per 100 pieces from LCSC, and the total comes to roughly £3.50 per board, including a simple PCB, and let's double that for assembly and testing. And then we get to the Kickstarter price of £7. Funny that. And I think this is a much more reasonable price point. At £14, I would steer clear of the Stacky Pi. If you want other RP2040 options, then you should look at something like the Adafruit Feather RP2040, which comes in with many more features at around £10 from UK resellers. So to summarise, unless you really want the 40-pin header, then I would give this one a miss. The story would change if the board remained at the £7 price point. I think at £7, this board is worth looking into and considering. Let me know what you think about this board in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thank you, and as always, have a nice day.